Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Carl Ross with the University of Portsmouth in the United Kingdom. Today, the 3rd of March 2012, I'm going to give you a lecture on how to use the commercial finite element computer package ANSYS to analyse the nonlinear buckling of a submarine pressure hull under external hydrostatic pressure. The first topic on preferences, then I pick on structural, then I press OK, and then I pick on preprocessor, element type, add edit delete, add, I'm going to use the shell 93 element, which is an 8 node element, and this is ANSYS 11, I could do that, I could also use shell 99, for ANSYS 11, but not for ANSYS 13, where I've got to use the shell 281, a slightly different method of inputting the thickness, and let me show you how to input the thickness, with the, with the shell 93, we've got real constants, we've got add, edit, delete, we've got add, I press OK. Now, the thickness is 5 centimeters wall thickness. I'm working in newtons and millimeters, so I'll type in 50, and I'll uh, OK that. If I put it on one node, it assumes its thickness throughout. And in the case of shell 281, you have to Input the thickness slightly different, differently. You use section, shell, layer, add layer, and then you put the thickness. And you must do that after you put the material properties. I'm putting the material properties in now. So we've got material properties. We've got material models. We've got structural. We've got linear. We've got elastic. We've got isotropic. I'm putting in a value of Young's modulus of steel, which is 2 times 10 to the fifth. Newton per millimeter squared or megapascals, the Poisson's ratio of 0.3. Put that, okay, that. That's the linear part. I put the nonlinear part now. So I press nonlinear, I press inelastic, weight independent. And I put isotropic and hardening plasticity. We've got means it's plasticity. And then we've got bilinear. And then I put in the yield stress, which is 250 megapascals or 250 newton per millimetre squared. And I put in the tangent modulus, which is a hundredth of the Young's modulus. That's what I'm assuming. So it's 2e3, 2 times 10 to 3 megapascals. I OK that, and that's fine. I put in the material nonlinearity there. I'll show it in the geometrical nonlinearity, nonlinearity shortly. So I'm up on, uh, I'm up on modelling. I've got create, I've got volumes, I've got cylinder, I've got solid cylinder. I'm going to put the origin of x is zero and y is zero, and the radius, which is five meters. So I'm putting in 5,000 millimeters, the length is four meters, so I'm putting 4,000 millimeters, and that's fine. I'll take that, that, I'll okay that. Now I've got my uh, cylinder, but I don't like that particular view, so I've got plot controls. Pan zoom rotate, and we've got isoparametric, and now I'm going to uh, mesh my model. So look down for meshing. There's meshing. I click on that. We've got mesh tool. Click on that. I'm going to set the, side, the minimum size of the element. So I put global set, and I'm going to make it one meter minimum length of element, which is 1,000 millimeters, and that will make the minimum length 1,000 millimeters. And now I'm going to change the volumes to areas, and that's quad, that's fine. I lift that up, I pick on, I pick on a mesh, I've got the mesh tool, I'm going to lift this up a bit higher, and then I pick on mesh there, and I'll be careful I mesh this. So I click on that there, and I click on it there, and I press apply, I press OK, and I meshed it. Now that's fine. I'm going to put the restraints on now. I'm going to change the view of this. So I pick on plot controls, pan, zoom, rotate, and I'm picking on right. Pick on right. It's fine. I'm going to restrain it completely. In the, on the right side, I pick on solution. I pick on define loads. I pick on apply. I pick on structural. I pick on displacement. I'm going to put on nodes. I'm going to box this. I'm going to box the right side in. I'm going to box that there. I've got to carefully draw the box there. So it's not too far to the left, otherwise it might 
it might uh, restrain mid-side nodes. Press apply, and it's completely fixed on the right side. So I put all the of freedom, and I press apply, and now I'm going to box the the left side. So I unbox there again, and I box this in there. I box it in there. Nothing got too far to the right. I will restrain mid-side nodes, and I press apply. Now in this case, I make it simply support it on the left side. So I make UX and UI zero, and OK that, and I've done that, and that's fine. And I put it on pressure. And put it on nodes and we'll box it in again and this particular vessel had elastic buckling pressure of about five megapascal so i'm going to put a, a much higher pressure than that i'm going to put 10 megapascal um I'll put that there and uh, i press apply and i put minus 10 because it's external minus 10 megapascal that's the pressure i'm putting and okay that and i've got the pressure and not pick on um, analysis type and solution controls and uh, small displacement must be changed to large displacement and this is where I put the geometrical part I must calculate the pre-stress because the pre-stress is on the pre-stress and uh, uh, so I have to put that in I have to put pre-stress in there there we are I'm picking on this and I've got to put the automatic time steppings on the number of increments I'm going to put 20 there, and I'm going to do a maximum of a thousand, of a thousand, and a minimum of one. And then I have to pick all solutions there, and I have to write every step. End step, I then pick on non linear, and I have to change the line search to on, and then I have to change the maximum number of iterations to a thousand. Done that one thousand, and then I uh, that's fine. And now I have to okay this, I've got that on there. I have to okay this, and that's fine. I can now run my problem. So I bring solve count ls, and I uh, say okay, and it's solving it now. It might take a few minutes, so I'm gonna switch my camcorder off. And I'll switch my camcorder on, and you can see a message there which says that the model is distorted, and that's what it should do because it suffered geometrical and material nonlinearity. It's fine, I've done it, the problem solved. I've now got to, uh, I've now got to do the post processing. So I pick on the, uh, let me get rid of this first. I get rid of this, I then pick on the general post processor, and I read results. And I read the last set. It's important. And I plot results. And I put the deform shape. And I OK it. And that's plotted it. That view is not terribly useful. I'll uh, tell you one minute. So I pick on plot controls. And I pick on pan zoom and rotate. And I pick on ISO. That's a better view. Because I'm going to pick this node here later on for the, uh, histo the historical um, behavior of this. So I go down to uh, time history post processing and I pick on pick on this pick on add data I go there I pick on a degree of free solution dex component and I press OK and now I move this out of the way here and I'm going to pick this point here I pick that point there and I go up here and I press OK and that's fine and uh, I then press on, um, I press on graph, I've done it, there we are, that's worked, you can see the vertical axis is the displacement, the deflection, it increases downwards, the pressure, the horizontal axis, it's a pressure factor actually, which increases horizontally to the right, and you can see here it's gone plastic and it's buckled there, and the, 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 the pressure factor is about 0.25. So I've got to multiply the 10 megapascal that I originally applied by 0.25 to give me 2.5 megapascals, and that is the plastic collapse pressure of a perfect circular cylindrical shell under external hydrostatic pressure. And this uh, is lower than the perfect elastic, uh, the elastic collapse pressure for a perfect vessel. Of course, you've got to divide this by a large factor because this is for a perfect vessel. You might have large 
initial out of circularity. I'll finish there, so I'm going to have this here. I come down here, pressure factor is here, that's about 0 0.25, 0 0.25 times 10, give me 2.5 megapascal. If I multiply that by 10, I get 25 bar. If I multiply that by 40.5, I get PSI. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. At this point, I'd like to thank my colleague Andrew Little for his input. And very great thanks to my ex colleague Terry, who has made an enormous effort in uh, developing this, this, uh, the answers used for structures. Thank you very much.